So remember, finite automata can only recognize regular languages. But as we saw, languages like PAL, the language of palindromes, are not regular. Can we expand the capabilities of finite automata so it can recognize non-regular languages? Well, let's begin by adding memory. However, this leads to a new problem. Each symbol in our memory has some significance, so we might remember M, K, N, S. But we need additional memory to tell us where we stored a symbol. So we might remember that the first symbol is in place 1, the second symbol is in place 2, and so on. But now this would require additional memory to tell us where we stored the information about where we stored the symbol. And this would then cause a problem. To avoid this infinite regress, we'll begin with a simple rule. Only the most recently added symbol is accessible. It helps to think of our memory as a stack of papers. Each page we add is something added to the memory, but only the top page is visible. This is a LIFO last in first out model. Remember, our finite automata had states but no memory, so we can incorporate states as well. As we saw, non-deterministic functions are easier to begin with, and we might be able to convert a non-deterministic automaton into a deterministic one. And this motivates the following definition. A pushdown automaton is a seven-tuple, where Q is a finite set of states, sigma is the set of symbols used by the input string, gamma is the set of symbols used in the memory stack, and sigma and gamma might or might not be the same, q0 is the initial state, z0 is the initial symbol on the stack, and there is some set of our states, that's our set of accepting state, and there's a transition rule delta that takes the Cartesian product of states, symbols, and memory symbols and produces a finite subset of states and memory symbols. Remember, this is a non-deterministic automaton. We'll make it deterministic later on. Intuitively, a pushdown automaton processes the symbols in our string, and it changes from one state to another based on the current state, the symbol being processed, and the top symbol of the stack. It's convenient to regard Z0 as the end of stack symbol. Nothing of any importance is stored beyond it. To make this easier to understand, let's introduce some notation. Suppose our pushdown automaton is in state Q and the current string is AX, where A is the next symbol to be processed and X is in the star closure of the symbols, and that's the remaining part of the string. Also, suppose our stack contents are b, y, where b is a stack symbol, and it's the top and only accessible entry of the stack, and y in the star closure is the remaining entries of the stack. And we'll keep track of our alphabet soup. So remember, q is our current state, a is the next symbol to be processed, x is the remaining part of the string to be processed, b is the top symbol in the memory stack, y is the remaining entries in the memory stack, and now we're going to do something. So we'll represent the current state or a pushdown automaton using the notation q ax by. Again, that's the current state, the first symbol of the string and the remaining part of the string, and the first symbol of the memory stack and the remaining part of the stack. Our transition function, delta q a b, will change the state to q prime, which might be the same as the original. Consume the first symbol of our string, that's gone, and change the top symbol of the stack to gamma, which might be a single symbol or a string. And so our new state will be q prime x gamma y. And we'll write the transition this way, and we'll read this as q a x b y derives q prime x gamma y in one step. 
And we can also represent delta as a function, QAB, that's the state, symbol of our string, top symbol of a stack, equals Q prime gamma, where our state changes to Q prime, and the top symbol of the stack is replaced by gamma. And again, it's important to remember that gamma could be nothing at all, lambda, if the top symbol is erased, or a string from our star closure that replaces the top symbol. And again, this string might also include the top symbol, pushing it down. So let's try to interpret the following transitions as derivations. So delta Q1 A R describes a transition from a pushdown automaton in state Q1, where A is the leading symbol of the string and R is the top of the stack. So our pushdown automaton can be described as Q1 AX RY, where X is the remainder of the string being processed and Y is the remainder of the stack. Now the first symbol of the string is always consumed, so what's left is X. And since delta Q1 AR is Q2S, then our state changes to Q2, and the top symbol of the stack, which was R, is changed to S. The rest of the stack is unchanged, so the stack is now S, Y. And so Q1 AX R Y derives Q2 X S Y in one step. For delta Q1 A R equals Q2 S R, the state changes to Q2, and the top symbol changes from R to S R. This is the push down part since the symbol R has been pushed into the second place. The rest of the string and the rest of the stack are unchanged, so our new string is just x, the remaining part, and our new stack is s, r, y. Finally, delta q1 a, r equals q2 lambda means the state changes to q2, the string changes from ax to x, again we've consumed that first symbol, and the stack changes from r, y to lambda, y, which is just y, essentially erasing the top symbol. And so we can write Q1 AXRY derives Q2XY in one step.